While John McCain starts to whack at President Bush, some big name Republicans start to walk away from him. In a moment, Christopher Hitchens will be joining us from Vanity Fair. But with us right now, former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld, a Republican who backed Mitt Romney during the primary season, but today has endorsed Barack Obama. Sir, you're quoted as saying it's not often you get a guy with his combination of qualities, that being Barack Obama, chief among which I would say is the deep sense of calm he displays, and I think that's a product of his equally deep intelligence. Do you want to expand on that, sir? Well, I, I think the calm that Barack Obama has demonstrated in the face of having everything but the kitchen sink thrown at him for the last two years is hugely impressive and evidence that uh, he could start Monday as President of the United States. I do think it's linked to the fact that he's obviously uh, a very, very sharp guy. He's also got uh, what I would call a first-class political temperament and has reached across the aisle in the past. I think he's very well suited to be uh, sit in that Oval Office. Well, Chancey Gardner was calm in being there. I mean, uh, are you sure that that's enough evidence, the calmness? Or is there something else that would uh, point to a direction of, uh, of competence in terms of being an executive of this country? I mean, I think you have to look where we are, Chris. And after eight years of uh, fiscal policy that I would have approved of along the way, look where we are. We're in the cheap seats. And our, our, our confidence mm -hmm. is broken at home. And our standing in the world has not been lower for for a while. And I think uh, Obama can change all that with his election. Well, you've always been a fiscal conservative. In fact, I think you're a fiscal conservative. That's fair enough to say. Have you, you've always been concerned about deficits and, uh, and keeping budgets balanced and sort of a traditional conservative view of things. What happened to this administration and why is it off course? And uh, apparently you and John McCain agree on that, but now you're stuck with a president with about an 11 percent approval rating of the direction he's taken us and a candidate who's not happy with the sitting Republican president and you're not happy with the Republican candidate. Well, it wasn't all, it wasn't all the fiscal policy. It was the... Uh, subprime mortgage mess was a lot of people trying to make a lot of money in a big hurry and i think that's the the fundamental uh, fundamental cause but i think obama's laid out a real good set of uh, prescriptions uh, to turn that around tax cut for 95 percent of the people is a good start well what else what else leads you to confidence in him i mean uh, tax cuts uh for the people below the 250,000 uh, income level i wonder whether you uh, i guess i'm looking for some hope here beyond hope <clears throat> Oh, it's beyond hope. I mean, I've gone deeply into his uh, energy policy and what he's proposed for the smart grid and uh, all kinds of incentives and uh, job creation. It all hangs together. That, that's one area I, I know something about myself, and uh, his platform is outstanding. What do you make of John McCain's temperament? I use the word temperament in the sense that it was, uh, it was uh, used in regard to President Roosevelt, uh, that he had a, a first-rate temperament. Do you see uh, a, uh, John McCain having one? Even well, Keel, I, I, ability I to handle think, crises, uh, <clears throat> keeping things in proper proportion in terms of the people around him and the world around him. I, I, think, I think John McCain's a very good man. Uh, my my uh, choice here of Barack Obama is based uh, entirely on Obama. I mean, I think he's a once-in-a-generation talent, uh, maybe even a once-in-a-lifetime talent. Well, let's talk about judgment here. Do you think John McCain was right in picking Governor Palin as his running mate? I is actually, that a, a good judgment? I actually think anyone that can get themselves elected governor of a state is qualified to be president of the United States. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't jump on that pile. Well, that's a pretty low standard. If you do say yes, if you do say yes, <laughs> it's not so. because you did. Come on, you are you really do so honestly. Do you, let me let me apply to her with you here. Is she ready to be president of the United States? Should that be necessary come January twenty first, second, or third next year? Well, you, you could argue that either, either way, but, uh, you know, being elected governor beats the heck out of being an American citizen and 35 years old. Okay, thank you, Governor. I see, I see a dodge when I see one, but you're very sound on Barack Obama, and you like him, and I guess you like Biden as his running mate. I do. I do. Oh. Okay, thank you. It's great to have you back in our world here, Governor Bill Weld, uh, former governor of Massachusetts. Good to be with Christopher you, Chris. Christopher Hitchens is a, is a columnist for Slate.com. He's also a starring one of the best around, actually, with Vanity Fair. He also says, vote for Obama. Sir, you are what I call a sort of a neo-neocon. You have supported the war in Iraq. You were tough on Bill Clinton, as I was. Why are you big on Obama? I'm not that big on Obama, but I think it's become morally and intellectually impossible to vote for the Republican ticket this year. And if you like, I'll say why that is. Go, sir. Well, it seems to me, I hate to say it in a way, but it has to be said, and I think a lot of people are noticing, John McCain is a lot older than he was in January, a lot older, and it shows. He sounds querulous. 
he looks weird, um, he, he automatically raises the question with all the collapsing scenery speeches that he's making. You never know what he's going to say next, and you get the feeling he doesn't really know either. He, he therefore makes it very urgent to consider the question, well, who has he picked for his caretaker? Which makes it doubly, triply, quadruply more disgraceful. He's picked someone who isn't, by any stretch of the imagination, qualified. Maybe not to be governor of Alaska. Sorry, yeah. Governor Weld. For well, some is his selection, does that indicate that he is in some sort of intellectual disorder, as well as being a bad pick to succeed him? Does yes. it say something about him? Yes, I simply think that if you, everything from him suddenly saying, you don't want not to be mentioned in the same breath as George Bush, as he recently said to Senator Obama. If he wanted to say that, you should have done it several years ago. You can't start saying it now. Collapsing scenery noises occur yet again. To calling this nutbag in Pittsburgh before anyone's done any time for checking. It's just yeah, the young just woman who claimed to have been mugged and had her face uh, uh, scarred with a B for Barack. Someone and who it was totally, is a, totally a bogus claim. Someone who herself is obviously, if not a racist or a bigot, someone who's got a severe personality disorder. Yeah. No, who, who, does nobody tell him, don't jump on this, don't call? Is that I mean, a sign of desperation that he reaches yes, for that? Yes, yes, it is. And so... So uh, let me ask you, let me track your thinking, because you've been covering public policy for a long time. Do you think John McCain was fit for the office a year ago? Just about, I, I suppose. I mean, what I, changed? It didn't, well, it didn't, the stress sorry. of campaigning? It's a, it's a hard thing to say, and I, uh, I think there's a big difference to be made between, or enforced actually, between being a veteran, being old, being experienced, and simply being elderly and, and borderline uh, senile. Now, a year ago, I don't You believe think, that? Yes, I, I, I think. And What's the, your evidence and of also borderline, the, well, borderline senility? It, it just the, if you listen to the debates between him and Obama on radio, which a couple of times I've had to do because I've been stuck in a cab trying to get home to watch them on TV, it's worrying to hear the sort of whistling note in McCain's voice and the sort of querulousness. And then when you watch it, it's often not that very reassuring either. There's something weird about the way he reacts. Why did he improve by most public estimates by the third debate? The third debate was a fairly close call in terms of how the public saw it. Only if you're more impressed by Joe the Plumber than, say, I am. And the, and the cutaway shots to his reactions were, were weird, as were his, the, his behavior, in, as was, I mean to say, his behavior in the run-up to this. Um, Where he refused to recognize so the pr physical to, presence to, of try, his opponent. Yeah, tried to get out of the, the first debate, uh, looking flaky and cowardly, tried to insert himself to no effect into the credit crisis. Well, how do you know it his motive was, it all, it was How do you was, know he sought to avoid going? He claimed at the time it was the fiscal mess the country was in, and he couldn't, he didn't think it was appropriate to have a first surely, debate that in that made, environment. That, that makes it more important to have an election debate than less if the, if the credit system of the country... Okay, let's talk about that. policy. You, you support the war in Iraq. Yes. You support well, its conduct so I, far. I, I think the United States has a responsibility for Iraq, which it's been upholding okay. better and better lately. Barack Obama gets elected president. Assume he wins. He gets into office. What should he do? What John McCain would have done? Well, uh, <clears throat> Barack Obama's been, as he has with everything else actually in his life, incredibly lucky in that the Iraqi government of Prime Minister Maliki says that it thinks there ought to be a deadline for American Yeah, withdrawal. they want us out eventually. So that, yeah. it, it, in a sense, the, the elected Iraqi government comes to the aid of, of Obama. So the, the traction that was there at one point on that, we, he could be accused of standing okay, up. That's a political call, and I accept that. Oh. That's a smart political call, because when a government tells you they're no longer hosting you, it is time to leave, yeah. because then it becomes a forced occupation. But Here's the question so I have. I put this question to Duncan Hunter, who is a military guy. I said, how come you say we should stay there and pursue victory when, the, when you say we've already gotten victory? And if we've already gotten victory, why can't we spare a troop over there? Well, there are two kinds of victory. One is stabilizing Iraq, getting a federal system in place, right. uh, getting the oil running again, right. redoing the infrastructure that Saddam destroyed. That's one. That's a long-term thing. But we have inflicted a battlefield defeat on al-Qaeda in Mesopotamia. Not just beating them militarily, but discrediting them politically in front of a very large and important But they weren't there until we got society. there. Yes, they were. Uh, that's one of the very few things Colin Powell got right at the, in his speech at the United Nations. Zakawi was in Iraq long before the United States was there. And every American intelligence report, every single yeah. one, says that there was a, at least some contact between the Ba'ath Party and... Some? Yeah, well, do you think this started on the day we arrived? Well, it wasn't just no, you can't, you, you can't possibly... Anyway, so you're basically still a hawk, but you're for Brock. That's what I find I'm for fighting, I'm for fighting Ba'athism and Bin Laden. No, but you're still for the war in Iraq. Going in was a smart move, you believe. Which was a smart Going move. Going into Iraq. Well, Whereas Barack's I major statement my, has been... I wouldn't been want on my headstone the smartest move ever made, but I think it was a necessary and just... But you and I disagreed about that. I mean, I always thought the war was a mistake. Barack thought it was a mistake. You think Barack's the right man to lead the country, but he said it was a mistake. You said it was the right in course. The debate he had with Mrs. Clinton in Texas, was it in Austin? Could have been. Almost nobody noticed what he said when the surge question was asked. She, of course, had to denounce it because she had to... I think he dodged. 
Well, no, he was good. He said, he said remember that the, he, he, did, he made a local point. He said, remember how the soldiers from Fort Hood came out of their barracks and really smashed al-Qaeda in Mesopotamia, drove them out of Baghdad. He said, just because I'm against the war doesn't mean I can't say a good word about the surge. He went right down the middle in a very, I thought, intelligent way. It might have been a little opportunist, but it shows he can think on his feet. And it shows he's not condemned or committed to um, any one position, just as he's gone to the right of McCain, you could say, on the Pakistani aggression against Afghanistan, which is the real name for what's gone wrong there. He says, we won't let Pakistan right. recolonize Afghanistan again using the Taliban as its proxy. We'll cross their border if they cross ours. And McCain says, no, no, we should negotiate. We should be dip diplomatic. So I, I don't think the moveon.org people have realized how much war Obama has, in theory, committed them to, but this yeah, is not, this is not a guy who is just trying to avoid the hard questions. You know what I find interesting, Christopher, because you are one of the best thinkers around. I find it interesting that both men of the right and women of the right and, and men of the left and women of the right and women of the